Hello, my name is Dr. Wando Olaiwala. I'm the chair of the Department of Family Medicine at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. And today I'm excited to talk to you about telehealth in trying times. You've been hearing so much about telehealth in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And I wanna take the opportunity to clarify what telehealth is and also dispel some myths about telehealth and take some of your questions. So first, telehealth is essentially connecting to your healthcare providers and your care delivery team using technology. There are many different forms that telehealth can be experienced in. Some of those include electronic media, very similar to sending an email, connecting to what we call things like e-visits or electronic visits. You can also connect through technology using patient portals where you might access some of your other healthcare information related to your doctor's office and things like your labs and your appointment scheduling. There are also opportunities within those portals to engage in technology and telehealth care with your provider. You can also have telehealth conducted through telephone. So similar to the way you would contact someone on the phone, but conduct a very thorough visit using telephone technology to engage. And finally, video technology. Many people are using video technology as a way to connect to people so you can have a face-to-face -face interaction, actually see each other, but not necessarily do that in person. So essentially, anytime you're using technology or information technology to connect to people to be able to receive and deliver care, we're talking about telehealth. Now, telehealth can be between the patient and the doctor. So myself as a physician, I can connect to my patients and deliver care that way. Um, it can also be done between patients and other clinicians and other healthcare providers. And it can also be done between doctors and, and each other. So from doctor to doctor, where we connect on different patients. But for purposes of this conversation, I'm gonna focus mostly on the patient connecting to their clinician. At OSU Wexner Medical Center, we've invested a significant amount of time and resources to expand our telehealth options so we can keep people safe and continue to provide excellent care to our patients during this period of social distancing and staying at home. As of now, we've converted many of our non-urgent visits to telehealth so that our patients can receive care in the comfort of their own homes at their convenience. You can access all of these options by calling our offices across Central Ohio for existing patients and also for our new patients. Now, I'd like to address a few myths and, and uh, facts that have come up regarding telehealth and share the facts about them. The first myth is that telehealth is only here because of COVID-19. So I just wanna dispel that myth pretty quickly. We've had telehealth options accessible to many of our patients and communities for quite a long time. I will say, however, that the COVID-19 pandemic has drastically accelerated our adoption and uptake of telehealth technology. For example, at the OSU Wexner Medical Center, we have offered electronic visits, telephone visits, and video visits to our patients for quite some time. And it's, we we're fortunate that we did because now we're in a position to be able to scale that pretty aggressively and have been very successful in doing so across our enterprise. However, telehealth will persist after COVID-19 and I'd be happy to chat more about that later. The second myth that I wanted to talk about is that telehealth care is very complicated for patients to do. So I do wanna just clarify that telehealth does not have to be complicated. Now there are a number of different concerns that patients and their care providers should have about using telehealth. Some of those include the broadband access and being able to be in a community or a location where you have the appropriate broadband access to be able to engage in telehealth. Also being able to have telehealth delivered in language that you understand is a very important thing to think about. But once you actually start using the various platforms through which technology and uh, telehealth can be delivered, such as those electronic type of visits, as I mentioned, patient porters, the telephone, or video technology, it actually is not that complicated to do in real time. The third myth is that telehealth care is lower quality than in-person care. So I wanted to just take a, a minute on that. There have been many studies that have been done across the nation and across the world really comparing tele the delivery of telehealth care to traditional in-person care. Now, while we know that telehealth care is not the solution for every single problem, and that some care is urgent and does require in-person, face-to-face, high-touch uh, transactions, we do know that telehealth care, for the most part, is very safe. We would never provide care that we felt like was lower quality. And in fact, your clinician will work hard to decide if telehealth care is appropriate 
for your complaint, for your symptom, or for your presentation. So that brings me to the next myth. The next myth is that if I use telehealth, I cannot see my doctor or my clinician in person. And I wanna say that we are working very hard to make sure that patients are able to get the care that they need in a safe way and when they would like to get that care. So if there, if there is, for whatever reason, the, your clinician feels that your complaint, the issue that you have going on does require in-person care, we will absolutely make sure that we can deliver that care to you safely in person and just be sure that our staff, our employees, and, and you are kept safe in that process. We also know that if you would like to, if you feel strongly about wanting to see your provider, your healthcare clinician, any of the professionals on our team, that we will make that available to you as well. So the patients do have choice in being able to get care. However, to keep people safe, we are strongly urging people to use technology for things that are non-urgent and things that are amenable to telehealth. The last myth that I'd like to clarify is that people need a lot of fancy technology to engage in telehealth. Similar to my other comment about being complicated to do is that you don't necessarily need a whole lot of fancy technology to engage in telehealth. In fact, many of those modalities that I spoke about, the electronic visits, the patient portals, telephonic visits, or video-related visits, can all be done through your smartphone. So if you have a smartphone that you are comfortable using, um, that you've used to connect with people in different ways, that you use to perhaps FaceTime with your children or FaceTime with your grandchildren or use Skype meetings or other kinds of Zoom or other forms of technology, if you are comfortable doing those kind of things in your other day-to-day -day parts of your life, whether it's through work, through school, through uh, connections with your family, this should not be, this should not require any technology that's fancier than that. So hopefully if you already have a medium through which you can connect to people using smart technology, smart devices, either phones, laptops, computers, that technology should be sufficient for you to be able to engage in telehealth care. So I'm gonna take a minute now and go over to some of the questions and comments and see what uh, people are asking. So just give me a moment. So there, there's a question that asks, what can I do differently as a patient to make sure my telehealth visit is successful? Great question. You know, as a patient, we want you to feel comfortable when you are engaging in a telehealth visit. And I think to be ready for the visit, just come as prepared as you can, just like you would with an in-person visit with all the information that you think might be necessary. So for example, let's say you want to talk to your doctor about a rash that you have. It would be very important for you to make sure that whatever ways you can protect your own privacy, but also share that information, that you can do that through, through a telehealth visit. So be prepared for, for the, the doctor or the other provider to ask you to show certain things that you might uh, need to show or to demonstrate things that you're feeling. So for example, if you're saying, I've got this pain and it's worse when I do certain motions, while we might not be able to actually reenact that motion in a telehealth visit, you could do that at home. So be prepared to show us, okay, so this is when I turn this way, this is what I'm feeling. Or when I go from sitting to standing, this is what I'm feeling. So you might have to play a little bit more of a role in demonstrating um, and showing some of the activities that, that kind of clarify the symptoms that you're having in a telehealth visit. I'd also say just make sure that you're in a position where you're comfortable so you don't feel like you're under pressure or you're under a spotlight, but you're in a comfortable place where you can you can feel confident that you can answer all the questions that might be asked. And then I would also just add, be aware that we may have to ask questions that we wouldn't normally ask um, or wouldn't have to ask if we could see you in person. So for example, I'd, I'd say, you know, can you just relax? I'm just going to count your breaths. Now that's something that I would normally do in the office without you even realizing it if I was trying to check your respiratory rate, but I might have to actually ask you to participate in that if we were doing the telehealth visit. I have another question um, that asks if we are, um, does health insurance pay for telehealth? Again, a great question. We've seen in the last few weeks, a lot of uh, changes with many payers across the state of Ohio and also across the nation, looking at how do we better um, prepare people to deliver telehealth by aligning some of the payers. And so, it's been it's been fantastic to see uh, from Medicare to a number of state based payers to Medicaid based payers um, and private payers recognize telehealth as similar to other kinds of in person care. So many types of telehealth visits are recognized by the payers and also 
uh, reimbursed at the same rate. So you should not have problems with your payers for many kinds of telehealth in getting those services covered. But I would certainly make sure that I checked with my, your specific insurance carrier to ensure that these visits will be covered for you. Another question um, is about um, prescribing medications during video visits. And so that's a really important question. So we, uh, your telehealth visit will be very similar to another visit that you would have. If we feel that there is a need for you to have follow-up laboratory testing, follow-up diagnostic imaging, uh, medications that need to be prescribed for you or other sorts of referrals for physical therapy or referrals to specialty care, um, all those things can be accomplished through telehealth. And so you should consider this the same as uh, any other visit that you would have. If there's a need for any additional care after you've completed that visit, that will certainly be um, taken care of for you. So we will we will send you to places where you need where you can get um, diagnostic testing safely. Uh, we will work on making sure you get your medications prescribed um, as 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 appropriate through telehealth, um, and you would then proceed to your pharmacy or wherever else as you would have done after another in-person visit. Oh, a great question has come in about uh, family participation in telehealth visits. So could my spouse or support person or another caregiver that takes care, for me, care of me or, or participates in my healthcare decisions with me participate in that visit with me? And I would say absolutely yes to the extent that you feel comfortable. So similar to going to a, a physician's office and having your caregiver, a, a loved, um, trusted friend or family member accompany you on that visit, the same holds true with uh, telehealth visits to the extent that you are comfortable. So I would say that that is a decision that we would ask you to make if you if you want someone to be part of that visit with you um, and, and you know sit beside you or engage with you on that phone, we would absolutely welcome that. Another question is where should I actually be when I'm doing a video visit? So that's a great question. Uh, and we think about that too as, as uh, physicians and care providers, as we're thinking about where should we be when we're interacting with you by video. Uh, I would say try to be in a place where there's good lighting so that people, the, the clinician can see you, um, be in a place where there's minimal clutter so there are not a lot of distractions in the background, but we also understand that if you're doing a video visit um, or you know telephone visit or some other visit where you're at home or you're in a safe space at, at, at work, um, we do understand that there might be distractions, there might be people that are in the background. We've seen a lot of these things where um, you know um, cute little dogs are running across the screen or people's uh, children are in the background, and if, if that happens, that's fine. We we know that you're you're in a place that's comfortable for you. We know that you're in an environment that um, your your children or your family members might be, so we feel like that's okay. So just just be comfortable, um, and just make sure that if you know if there's something that will require us getting a good look at maybe skin or rash or something that you've got good light in that area. Another question um, is around language in uh, and in telehealth. So uh, you know the the. Providers that communicate with you through telehealth will do their best to do that in the language that you understand. So we've been working hard at the medical center to make sure that we have access to our language interpretation and disability accommodations for patients who need that. So we have uh, uh, we have a, a organization that we work with through which when you're in our offices, we can connect to uh, medically trained interpreters to provide interpretation services for our patients in, in, in hundreds of languages and also accommodate patients that have disability. So we want to make sure that you are able to interact with us in the language you understand. So if, you, if there is a need for an accommodation based on disability needs or language preferences, your clinician will work hard to get our language interpretation services and disability accommodations uh, scheduled so that that can be accommodated during your visit. Another question is regarding remote monitoring um, and how patients are remotely monitoring certain parts of their their health during uh, this period of telehealth. Um, I'm not, I want to make sure I understand the question, but I think uh, what I'll say is that in our in our uh, our patient portal where our patients at the OSU Wexner Medical Center can engage with their clinicians and share questions and share findings and share things that are that they're experiencing at home, we do have many patients that submit things like their blood pressures, 
Um, if they have a home blood pressure monitor, they can submit their blood pressures through that, through the portal. They can also submit things like their daily weights, or if there are uh, patients with diabetes who are monitoring their home blood sugars, those, those values can also be submitted through the portal. So we encourage people to continue to do those things that they, they may have been doing before, but they may, may not have. However, in this period where we're not seeing you in person as much as we were before, or we're using these different technologies to engage with you, it is really important to us to be able to get as much information as we can uh, through whatever remote monitoring tools or home-based testing that you're able to do in the comfort of your home. So thank you for, for all the questions. If there are any questions I didn't get to, we'll try to answer those uh, in um, the text later, but we really appreciate the just the tremendous efforts of all the employees, the staff, the physicians, all the clinicians at OSU's Western Medical Center and transitioning to telehealth so quickly. And really, really wanna appreciate all of our patients for being so thoughtful, so generous, generous and so accommodating with their time as we've done this. We truly believe that this is a trying time for so many people. We understand that connecting through technology is not something that people are always used to doing with their healthcare, but we're excited to see that in these trying times with COVID-19, we're able to connect people in ways that we had not done before or ways that we had not accelerated before. Thank you all and we hope to see you soon at one of your telehealth visits.